Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, we would like to again remind you to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Thank you. Bapak Ibu, karena acara kita akan segera dimulai, kami mohon agar Bapak Ibu dan rekan-rekan sekalian untuk tidak lupa membuat mute telepon dan atau mungkin uh, komputer Bapak Ibu sekalian. Distinguished Head and Secretary of the Department of Nutrition and Health, Faculty of Medicine, Public Health and Nursing, Universitas Gajah Mada. Distinguished Lecturers of the Department of Nutrition and Health, Faculty of Medicine, Public Health and Nursing, Universitas Gajah Mada. Distinguished Speaker. Dr. Zulfitri Azwan Madaud, RDN, from the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics, Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University Putra Malaysia, and also the Dietetic Internship students and participants of the event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning dan selamat pagi. Ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu dan rekan-rekan sekalian, welcome back to the third meeting of the massive open online course of nutrition care process on kidney disease, a case-based learning, which is held by the Department of Nutrition and Health, the Faculty of Medicine, Public Health and Nursing, Universitas Gajah Mada. Yang kami hormati, Ketua dan Sekretaris Departemen Gizi Kesehatan, FKKMK UGM, seluruh dosen Departemen Gizi Kesehatan, FKKMK UGM, Uh, narasumber kami, Dr. Zulfitri Azwan Mardawud, RDN, dari University Putra Malaysia, seluruh mahasiswa prodi pendidikan profesi dietitian, dan seluruh peserta MOOC Asuhan Gizi pada Penyakit Ginjal Berbasis Studi Kasus. Saya mengucapkan selamat datang kembali kepada Bapak Ibu dan rekan-rekan sekalian. Hari ini 18 Agustus 2021 pada pertemuan yang ketiga Massive Open Online Course atau MOOC Asuhan Gizi pada Penyakit Ginjal berbasis studi kasus. Bapak Ibu and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin today's event with the presentations of our guest lecture. Dr. Zulfitri Azwan Madaud RDN from University Putra Malaysia. I would like to invite here Miss Josephine Anandati to guide this session. Miss Anandati, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maumi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Zulfitri. We meet again after last week. Uh, together, we learn and discuss about the medical nutrition therapy on chronic kidney disease. And for today, we will learn more on the application of the nutrition care process, especially for diabetic nephropathy, uh, and we will dig deeper through the case study. And for today's session, Dr. Zulfitri, the time and screen is yours. Do you need any assistance for the slide? Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Josephine. I think I can, I can manage it. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, let me check. Where's my side? <laughs> How's everyone today? Hope everyone is okay. See hi, see hi. Yeah. Uh, and stay safe. Okay, today is gonna be more like um, you know, uh, a sharing, not re uh, uh, a practical session, right? Rather than a lecture based session, right? So we're gonna work together in uh solving uh this case, right? So um, what are the expected uh, learning outcome from this uh, about two hour session? Right, so basically, I would expect all the intern uh, would be able to apply the medical nutrition therapy, particularly in this uh, sessions we're gonna uh, go through for uh, diabetic kidney disease, and then uh, I will also expect intern to you know uh, document the nutrition care process, yeah, in a proper manner, uh, 
uh, based on the case that I'm going to present to you, all right? All right, so everyone ready? So before we actually going uh, further, yeah, uh, let us recap on what we have actually touched uh, so that, uh, you know, I'm just uh, trying to touch the ground on what we have discussed last week, yeah? Uh, and then, as usual, we're going to begin our uh, lecture with this one. Okay, so I have sent to you. There, yeah, send, send to all. Okay, I have sent to you the Mentimeter um, invitation. Have you got it? Josephine, have you got it? Yes. You mean okay? So let's. Okay. Okay. We will we will play some quiz just you know to chat in term of um uh your understanding about what we have discussed last week, right? This is just for fun. Don't worry, it will not be graded. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Are you managed to see the, the screen? Dr. Zulfitri, um, there might be some problem with the invitation through the chat box. Can you oh. please share the, the Mentimeter code? Okay, okay. So we can use the web web All right, web sure, sure. Mentimeter. Okay. I will use that instead. Okay, stop sharing. Okay, share screen and then move to share this. Can you see now? Yes. All right, okay. So the code is 8115 5, 5, 8, Can you help me to share this on the... Yes, 8115. Go to www.menti.com and then uh, key in the code. Eight one one five 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 eight nine, right? Okay, I can see some reaction coming in. That's mean uh, we good to go. Maybe I can see some more numbers so that you guys are ready. Okay. All right, about eleven participants. Okay, all right, let's move on, okay? Let's move on with the quiz. Okay, let's take a look at this case here. Yeah? Uh, Mrs. A presented with the following. BMI for 21, serum albumin at 3.9 gram per deciliter, reduced muscle mass about 5% in a three month, and also energy and protein intake. Uh, 30 k uh, kcal per kilogram ID body weight and also 1 gram per kilogram ID body weight respectively. Okay. So based on this condition, what do you think about Mrs. A? Okay. Question 1 of 7. There are only 7 question. So 30 participants already joining. We give maybe another several seconds. Thirty-one. Okay. 
to take Okay, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's begin. Decrease. Okay, you need to answer very fast. So based on the case just now, is Mr. A experiencing protein energy wasting based on ISRNM criteria? You got 30 seconds to answer this. Three, two, one. Time's up. All right. No, okay. There are some of you um, answer it as yes. Okay. Uh, remember in I ISRNM criteria, wait, the song is quite bit annoying. Based on ISRNM criteria, you know, uh, you need to meet three criteria out of the four criteria, right? So based on that, is it doesn't actually meet the three criteria. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Okay. Wow. Congratulations to S, Ines, and Dragon for the top being in the top three. Let's move on. Question two of three of seven. Okay, as, as usual, answer very fast. Okay, which of the following has the highest phosphorus absorption rate? We're talking about rate of, of absorption just yes, now. You have 20 seconds to answer it. Okay. Three, two, one. Time's up. Okay, it's quite interesting. Quite uh, quite a number of you answering full cream milk. Yeah, uh, full cream milk. You know, is um, yeah, it has phosphorus, quite a significant amount of phosphorus. But I'm not talking about the amount of phosphorus. I'm talking about phosphorus absorption rate. And phosphorus absorption rate is very high in processed food because they are using inorganic phosphorus. Okay. So just remember any processed food mostly will have any additive that contain phosphorus and that is the absorption rate can be 90 to 100 percent right okay moving on okay congratulations to wow flower and ss getting up all right, moving on. Question three of seven. Okay. Which of the following is non iatrogenic factors for malnutrition? Non iatrogenic factors. Okay, that's the key word. High diet monotony or nutrient loss via dialysis treatment. Which one? Ah, okay, quite numbers <laughs> answering as nutrient loss when I and remember the iatrogenic fact, non iatrogenic factors is factors not related to dialysis per se. Okay, so it should be from the diet perspective. Okay, okay moving on. Oh, Aziza coming up. Right, that's good. Aziza and Flower climbing the stairs. Okay, question four of seven. Answer very fast to get more points. For CKD 5D patient, remember 5D each patient undergoing dialysis, right? 
So the following composite you nutritional know, index that has been recommended. Which one? MNA, FFQ, MIS, or NIS. Which one? All right, thumbs up. MIS. Very good. Very good. Okay. So MIS has been recommended. Okay. For CKD, uh, we they also recommended for seven point SDA as a tool as a composite nutritional uh, uh screening tool. Okay, who's going up? Wow, Lina, Aziza. Okay, very proud. Okay, fastest one. Aziza is my mom name anyway. All right. Okay. Next. Present five out of seven. So you got to answer this fast to get more point. A recommended protein amount for diabetic CKD three to five patient. Mm -hmm. In terms of gram per kilogram body weight. Which one is it? The key word is diabetic. Okay, time is up. Correct. Wow, I'm proud of you. Majority of you answering correct. 0.6 to 0.8. Yeah, this is for diabetic. Why we give slightly higher protein for diabetic? Yeah, because we want to make sure that the patient diabetic can adjustment of glycemic control is also important there. Yeah. Right. Moving in. Dinda going up. The Hall of Fame. All right. Okay. Ah, this is the fastest one. All right. There's no gentleman here. It's all female. Okay. Come on. My species. All right. Question six of seven. Answer fast to get more point. Okay. Low potassium option for a snack for a patient with elevated potassium. Which one would be? You got 20 minutes. You are A. A is actually Ubi, Ubi Rebus with a coconut. B, Pengat Pisang, C, Sago, and D, Cream Crackers. Very good, very good. Okay, majority answer it correct. Okay, Sago and Cream Crackers would be the better option for controlling the potassium. Going up, who is going up? Okay, Chacha, Kaka. I'm not sure is this Kaka or Chacha. Okay, but Inas is still in the Hall of Fame. Okay, coming on. Next question. Okay, this is the final, final question for you. Protein requirement for PD patient, the keyword is non-diabetic, non-diabetic PD patient. What is the protein requirement? Come on, come on. You got 20 seconds. You don't have need to type, uh, you just type the range. What will be the range? Yeah. Right, time's up. Let's see whether there's a correct answer. Okay, the correct answer is 1.0, 1.2. I know that 1, 0 and 1, 2 is also correct. I'm really sorry <laughs> because in Indonesia, you use comma instead of uh, point, right? But you know where you're going, right? Okay, but there are all sort of answer. Here yeah, also 0.5 to 0.6 for PD patients. Uh, that's quite interesting. 
Okay, so basically for PD, for CKD5B, those undergoing dialysis are going to give a slightly higher protein rather than uh, their CKD counterpart here. Yeah. Uh, so because partly uh, the dialysis process is a very catabolic process, they're losing protein during dialysis, so you want to give a slightly higher protein, All right? Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Then we are done. Flower and Tifa. Wow. Okay, let's see overall mark. Okay, yes. Congratulations to Inas with 4,292 points. All right, all the best. And uh, proud, uh, proud uh, to all of you as well. Okay. Let me, let me just close that. Where is it? Why well, I cannot turn it off? All right, uh, so everyone have fun. You have fun, Josephine? Yes. All right. Okay. So who is Inas? Can you identify yourself? Can you maybe uh, put a reaction, put thumbs up perhaps? Who is, who is Inas? No, I cannot see. All right. Never mind. I will call you at some point. All right. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so we are going to move into this case, right? Let's get uh, things uh, a bit serious. Okay, so just want to show with you, this is a referral letter that we are actually using at uh, my hospital in Hospital Pengajar UPM. Uh, hospital Pengajar in English means teaching hospital of University of Petra Malaysia, right? So um, we are using a kind of hybrid system, you know, for referral, they will be like, uh, um, obviously they will be like um, uh, a paper-based referral ticket, but most of the system are actually online based. And yeah, we can just look into the um, online system. Yeah, you're using hospital information uh, system. Yeah, so this is, this is basically a referral form that being filled up by the physician, by the doctors or the specialists. They write down the, down the patient name and then the, what would be the reason for the referrals and perhaps the additional notes uh, that they wanted to uh, dietitian to tackle for, right? And then uh, this is actually uh, um, can be uh, from patient at the outpatient setting. You know, we have a multi-disciplinary uh, clinic. We have a different um, subspecialty or medical specialty. We have medical clinic, uh, medical specialist clinic. We have um, pediatrics clinic, uh, uh, orthopedics clinic and all that. Um, so uh, then all of these patients will actually, uh, if they are referred to us, they will, uh, you know, uh, bring this patient has to go to and attend our clinic. In our clinic is located in the family medicine specialist clinic, right? Um, and also for inpatient, yeah. Uh, if the patient is being referred as an inpatient patient, so the dietitian have to go up to the wards to see the patient. And we have also a quality indicator, yeah, in which uh, as part of our uh, MHSQ patient. Malaysian um, uh, is kind of quality system for the hospital to uh, to check whether we are complying to that. There are certain quality indicator that we have to uh, uh, adhere to, right? For example, uh, in terms of percentage of achievement of energy requirement, it has to achieve seventy percent um, of the energy requirement within certain days. So, so we are also monitoring that on that aspect, yeah? So these are our referral system. So this is a case background. So I've seen this case uh, last week and I have a video recording of her. 
So Missy is a 27 year old Chinese lady yeah, who has been followed up in nephrology clinic. So for your information, some of you may not be familiar with demographic of Malaysia. So in Malaysia, um, the main ethnicity uh, is Malay, which represents about 59, 58%. And then we have uh, Chinese, which is 20 plus percent. And then we have Indian. Uh, and then on other notes, we also have some other Bumi Putras uh, in Sabah, in Sarawak, and uh, some other uh, Aborigines. Um, so, but their, their numbers is at a much uh, smaller percentage, right? So, uh, she is single and currently live in a single bedroom apartment alone. Her family is staying in Johor and her dad unfortunately already passed away a year ago due to cancer. And her mom, uh, so in, in her village in Johor, so uh, he's staying, uh, she's staying with three other siblings at home and her family, you know, all of her family members except for her dad. So he uh, has no non-medical illnesses, meaning that they're pretty much healthier, healthy, all right? So she's a currently postgraduate student in, in our university and pursuing degree in MBA. Right. Um, and then she's uh, complained that, you know, because, you know, being a student, the time is really hectic and actually difficult to comply with insulin as well as with diet. And she had long history of uncontrolled type 1 diabetes meter. So, so she's been diagnosed as type 1 diabetics since 16 years old. Yeah. And then uh, she was recently presented to emergency department of our hospital uh, with the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis, right? Um, you know, um, since then, uh, there are repeated admission to the hospital, uh, mostly related to the control of, of her blood sugar, yeah? And also, she also quite uh, experienced uh, frequent hypoglycemia. So that is pretty much a background about this case. This is uh, the case of, you know, uh, diabetic kidney disease that we are going to look for today. So on July 1st, 2021, yeah, just recently, yeah, in the July, so she has been admitted to ED of our hospital for sudden onset of big uh, back pain and also shortness of breath. Yeah, she can't really breathe. So the diagnosis was um, made on that time uh, was uncontrolled diabetes and they want to rule out the diabetic ketoacidosis. And she was also presented with pedal uh, edema, you know, the edema, the accumulation of fruits in, on her leg, yeah. And elevated blood pressure and also fatigue. On July 6, you know, uh, after six days in the hospital, so DKA was resolved and she was discharged. While she was in the hospital, she was seen by the nephrologist and then she was diagnosed as a uh, diabetic kidney disease, uh, stage four, CKD4, yeah? And uh, she was uh, scheduled for follow-up appointment in medical clinic. So um, the nephrologist also refer her to a dietitian for follow-up at our outpatient clinic for low protein diet to delay the further progression of her diabetic kidney disease. So she is then scheduled to meet up a dietitian at the diabetes clinic on August 9 in 2021. So I've met her and I have recorded uh, some recession that I want to share with you, okay? So this was a biochemical data that available in the system. So when I pull out this, this was the latest uh, available data was on July 6, yeah. Uh, blood urea nitrogen, uh, elevated creatinine elevated. This is uh, typical for kidney patient. You will see this thing are elevated, yeah. And then uh, sodium in normal range, potassium in normal range, uh, albeit towards the higher end, yeah. Phosphorus is also normal range, but also in the higher end. Uh, KSM is normal, uh, albumin are pretty low, 34, and then total protein is also a normal range, HB, uh, okay, but 
uh, in the lower end here. And A1C, GB1C is indicating the glycemic control is at 8.4, yeah, which is uh, not, you know, not in a good control. So regarding anthropometric data, her height was 161 and the weight that was a uh, weight during her admission to the hospital was 57.1, right? Okay, so how, how are we going to do this, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Um, um, let me check. Uh, Josephine, do we have the uh, breakout room features in this? Yes, we, we do have that. We do have that. Uh, I can see that there are about 99 participants. If, okay, uh, let's, let's, um, let's, what, what we're going to do today is we are going through this case. Yeah, we are going through this case. <clears throat> it's a bit uh, too many of you, about 100 of you in this room to discuss everything, you know. I would like to have uh, participation from uh, all of you. So uh, after we're going through the data that are available, and then we are going to see uh, my interview with her, you know, and then from there, you can also get some additional data. Uh, that interview is pretty much uh, on the diet aspect. So you can actually calculate the intake and so on. And then after that, um, you, I'm going to give you some time to discuss within a group. Maybe we can divide into five group, perhaps. Yeah, five group. So in that five group, if there are practitioners, that will be great. You know, if you uh, if you can divide the pra the practitioners can join uh, each of the group, that would be great to help the dietitian intern uh, to gauge on this case. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, after you finish uh, the discussion about this case, all right, I would like to invite the patient to come in, and then um, sorry. Um, maybe I can get presentation, you just, just five minute presentation from each of the group, you know, what will be your, uh, your intervention. And then I can invite the patients to come in and then for you to give the intervention to the patient for the uh, selected group that I choose. Is it, is it okay, Josephine? Yes. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. So this is uh, the data. Uh, the available data, yeah. Uh, I hope you can okay, actually screen capture or uh, you, you jot it down, okay. And then um, this is the clinical data that available in the system, you know, um, that was during her admission again, yeah. Uh, temperature 37 was normal, and that stress was 14, which is uh, pretty high, yeah. Medication that uh, she was uh, taking, um, was uh, insulin, atropine, insulatide, uh, folate, pentrapazole, and sebastatin. Okay, let's watch this video though. Okay. Video application. Okay, let's watch this video. Can you see the video, Josephine? Yes. All right, okay. Can you hear anything? Any sound? Not yet. Okay. This is a conversation between uh, me and patient. Just uh, pay your attention. Yeah, and please uh, jot down all, right. all, all the relevant relevant information. All right. Uh, nama Cik Miss Chan ke? Ah, yeah, betul Miss Chan. Okay. Okay, terima kasih ya. Uh, sebab setuju untuk kita adakan uh, tele consultation ni. Uh, so macam yang saya terangkan dekat uh, Miss Chan lah dalam telefon tadi yang uh, di HBUPM sekarang uh, uh, 50% pesakit kita cuba melalui tele consultation sebabnya uh, kita nak kurangkan uh, interaksi lah uh, secara fizikal dengan uh, pesakit ya. 
uh, memandangkan situasi uh, COVID-19 ni uh, tapi hmm. ada setengah pesakit tu dia tak ada uh, peralatan yang yang bersesuaian so terpaksa juga datang lah yeah. so terima kasih hmm. uh, Miss Chai so nama saya uh, Dr. Zul, saya uh, dietitian di HPPM um, Miss Chai dah makan ke pagi ni? Dah, dah, dah makan Okay Alright, uh, saya, saya boleh panggil Miss Chan ya? Nah, boleh, boleh. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, Miss Chan, uh, Miss Chan, uh, apa? Uh, prefer untuk cakap Melayu ke ataupun English ke macam mana? Hmm, English lah, prefer English sebenarnya ya. <laughs> ya. Yeah. Okay, Alright. Uh, so Miss Chan, I uh, I've been told by uh, Dr. Fat, uh, she's referring uh, you to me uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, some consultation pertaining to uh, CKD. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so Miss Chan, are you aware about that? Yeah, actually, Dr. Fat told me the other day about this. All right. Okay. Great. So, have have you seen her? Uh, yeah. Actually, I've seen her last week. Oh, you've seen her last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, uh, do you have any question about your your condition? Mm, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm thinking like how should I uh, control my, you know, quite worrying lah because my HbA1c is quite high. All it's right. hard for me to control, but yeah, I don't know how with my busy schedules and yeah, quite congested. I'm not sure how should I um, solve this issue. Okay, let's go through into that issue uh, slightly later. All right. Um, so uh, I just I just wonder just maybe uh to get uh, some history for you from you right uh what I can get here maybe I can just supplement some of it right mm -hmm. um so may I know uh, when you actually started to have a type one diabetes mm, since I was secondary actually around sixteen years old sixteen years old right mm hmm. Okay, so uh, since 16 years, I mean, since several years ago, how, how do you manage your diabetes generally? Was it okay? Mm, it's um, up and down, I would say, yeah. It's up and down because, you know, I need to use insulin. So sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. And then due to my busy schedule, I forgot actually to, to um, you know, inject. Or sometimes I eat, then I forgot to inject. Or sometimes I inject, then... I did not eat anything, yeah. I see. Okay, okay. Mm. I can understand, yeah, your your situation being a student and so on, yeah. Uh, with the busy busy schedule, right? So, um, so, so what what actually, um, so you know, uh, how how do you, yeah? Sorry, what what I mean is, uh, may I know further what what kind of uh medication? You are currently taking medication. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm taking the insulin lah, like I mentioned just now. So okay. the one that uh before meal the three times a day the atropy. Atropy. Okay. Mm. How how many unit of atropy? Mm, sixteen. Sixteen unit. So you have mm -hmm. uh, atropy uh three times in a day with sixteen unit. All right. Yep. And Mm -hmm. uh, how long you actually inject it before your meal? Uh, around 15 or half an hour before. 15, 15 minutes to half an hour. Mm. 15 minutes and half an hour before, okay. So that is atropic. Do you have any other insulin? Uh, yeah, the one at night. At night, what is it? Yep. Uh, insulatat, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Insulatat, okay. Mm. Insulatat, how many units is it? Uh, 22. 22, okay. So uh, what time at night you actually taking this? Is it... Uh, what time? Mm, around 10 or 10.30 at night. 10.30, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it uh, after say or supper? Or before mm, It supper? depends. Sometimes I take, sometimes I forgot to take supper. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. understood. Okay, uh, on top of insulin, do you have any other medication? Then yeah, uh, I'm taking folate as well. Oh, you're taking folate, folate acid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, yeah. okay. What else? 
uh, the one for my yogurt issue, the pentoprazole. Oh, okay, pentoprazole. Right. Mm. So this is, you have gut as well. Yeah. Are, are you go, uh, taking this on a daily basis? Or is it mm. whenever the symptom arrives? Uh, whenever I feel discomfort only, I take actually. Okay. okay. All right. You have pentoprazole. And then anything else? Yeah, uh, for my cholesterol, the simvastatin. Okay. All right. Mm. For cholesterol, simvastatin. So, uh, once a day, is it? Yeah, once a day. All right. Okay. So, for the simvastatin, are you taking this on a daily basis? Regular basis? Yeah. This one, I'm taking it regular basis. Yeah, I know uh, since when you're starting on uh, simvastatin? Mm, since when? Uh, um, actually, last year. Oh, last year. Just, mm. just recently. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, on top, is that all from the, what the doctors give to you? Yeah, this is what the doctors gave me. All right. Okay. So, on top of this, uh, do you actually taking any supplements or you're taking any medication that you just uh, buy yourself in the pharmacy? Yeah, I'm actually taking a herbal supplement. Yeah, a, like a Chinese supplement is called Lingji. Oh, Lingji. All right. Mm. Is it in a capsule form or is it in powder yeah, form? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a capsulated powder form. Yeah. Capsulated powder form. All right. Okay. Mm. Uh, is, it, is there any dosage that you are actually... Mm, I can't remember the dosage, but it's once a, once a day. Yeah. Once a day. One tablet one, a day. One mm. capsule? In a yeah, day. one capsule a day. Yeah. One capsule in a day. Right. Okay. Is there a specific reason you're taking energy? Mm, yeah, they say um, it's good for the blood circulation. Oh. Yeah, like in terms of and more energetic and then increase the blood flow. All right. Okay, okay. Okay. Any multivitamins you're taking? Mm, no. No, okay. All right. Mm. So, uh, Ms. Tian, uh, on top of that, I would like to know what you're actually eating uh, for very first thing in the morning when you uh, wake up until, you know, uh, you sleep. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Right. So, what, what time you actually had your first meal in the day? Mm, 8 a.m. 8 a.m., right. So, what, what you have for your first meal? Uh, usually, I'll drink a cup of Milo. Mm -hmm. Milo, a cup yeah, and then milk. with is yeah, one cup uh, only. Just Milo or Milo with milk? Is there any issue? Um, it's three in one, yeah. Oh, three sachet. In one. All mm. right, so three in one sachet, yeah. So it's included. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one cup, and, and anything else? Uh, with uh plain crackers, yeah, around three pieces. Plain crackers. Is this like a uh, saying biscuit? The, yeah, the the, yeah. Right. yeah, the square one, yeah. Okay, three pieces, yeah? Mm. This is the regular one, it's not whole grain or whole fiber and so, so on. Just regular. Mm, no, one. just the normal one. Mm. Normal one, okay. So anything else you have? At mm, no, that, that's all for breakfast. Okay. So do you typically have, uh, is this considered as your breakfast? Yeah, typical okay. breakfast, yeah. Mm. Breakfast, okay. So in, in a week, how frequent do you actually have this? In a week. Um, and also plain crackers. Four to five times a week. Four to five times a week, okay. Yeah. Mm. Right? If you don't have uh, Milo and plain crackers, what would you have? Mm. Mm, actually, I will swap. Let's say um, if I'm not having Milo or plain crackers, probably I have a cup of um, milk, low-fat milk. Okay. And then uh, with um, two slices of bread, sizes of bread just uh the white bread yeah and then yeah sometime probably with uh kaya or jam kaya or jam okay uh if you have kaya uh how many teaspoon or tablespoon you put on it mm, around one tablespoon okay you put about one tablespoon of spread mm. it's either kaya yeah. or jam yeah yeah all right mm. okay um and also two uh, slices, two slices of bread, and mm -hmm. then it would be white bread. Is it white bread? Yeah, okay. white bread. Mm. And also one cup of milk. Okay. Mm. So that is for your eight a.m. meal. So mm. what what would be your next meal? 
My next will will be lunch. Okay, your lunch. What was your lunch time yesterday? Lunch time around 1. 1, okay. Are mm. you typically having your lunch time around 1? Uh, sometimes one, sometimes two. Yeah, depends on my schedule. Yeah, after my classes. Mm. Oh, sometimes two, right? Mm. Okay. Uh, and then what you have yesterday for your lunch? Mm, what I have, um, yeah, I have mixed rice. So basically white rice. Okay. Around uh, white rice. How, half how? half Chinese rice bowl. Or oh, half Chinese bowl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, then yeah, I have. Um, Stir fried uh mustard leaf. Stir fried mustard leaf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Around um half cup. Half cup. Okay. Mm. All right. And then any any lau lau. Uh yeah, I had fish as well, steam fish. You have steam fish. May I know what mm. kind of fish is this? Um, it's tilapia fish. Yeah. Oh, tilapia. Right. Mm. And then uh, if I, you, you, if you can imagine uh, a mesh box, you know, uh, from yeah, the uh -huh. fish, how, how many mesh mm -hmm. box do you think you had? Mm, probably around two, yeah, two mesh box. Two mesh box, all right. Mm. Okay, so this um, tilapia steam fish, does it come with anything else, a ginger, a soy, bit, soy sauce, yes. anything else? Yeah, it's actually steamed with uh, ginger slices with soy sauce. And soy sauce, right. Mm. Okay. Okay, uh, so you have uh, white rice, uh, taken with uh, stir-fried uh, mustard leaf, and then you have mm -hmm. um, uh, tilapia fish, two mm -hmm. mashed balls, right? Mm -hmm. uh, steamed tilapia fish, or what, what else do you have? Mm, and an egg, actually, fried egg. Oh, fried egg. Yeah, one whole fried egg. Yep, one whole fried egg. Okay. Okay. Um, is that all? Mm, yeah, that's all for my mixed rice dishes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, any drink? Um, yeah, I had a cup of hot Chinese tea. Hot Chinese tea, one cup, yeah? Mm. One whole yep. cup. Okay, mm. one cup of Chinese tea. Okay. So I just wonder for your lunch, is this like your typical things that you're going to have for your lunch or you have different uh, um, choices? Mm, yeah, actually it's a kind of um, general, I mean usually quite frequent like in a week I'll eat a mixed rice with combination of fish and veggie around um, three to four times a week. And then other days, probably I have like some fried miho, no fried rice. Yeah, those like take away that is easy. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Mm. So if you have like fried miho, for example, is it uh, mm -hmm. how much you actually take it? Uh, fried miho around uh, half Chinese bowl as well. Yeah, around that. Half Chinese bowl. Okay. Mm. So probably you, you can't finish the whole portion, is it? Because mm, no, yeah, because. The whole portion is mm. Bigger. All right, okay. Yeah, it's too big because yeah, the appetite and also it affecting my taste. You know, sometimes uh the, the taste is a bit bittery, so I don't feel like eating that much. Yeah. Okay, so you were mm. saying you are having uh issues with your appetite. Mm. Okay, can you tell me a bit more about it? Or what do you mean by that? Mm, because yeah, the, the taste will affect the appetite because sometimes when you eat there is um bitter taste and then or there's sometimes there is less of taste. So I prefer like more stronger tasting if I would like to eat, like for be you know, some soy sauce, extra soy sauce or mm -hmm. sweet drinks. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Since since when you actually having this uh bitter taste? Mm, quite some time already, actually. Yeah, starting from uh, beginning of the year actually. This year, yeah. This 2021? Mm. Mm, okay. So you were saying that you're having this uh, bitter taste and then also it's also affecting your appetite. Mm -hmm. And then the way you cope with it is that uh, you probably have added some other, you know, uh, more stronger flavor like mm. uh, soy mm. sauce. Is it, is it correct? Yep. All right. Okay. 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 Uh, have you actually thought anything uh, about this to nephrologists? No, actually. Oh, you haven't thought, all right. No. Okay. Mm. okay. 
Okay, uh, let's continue. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you were saying just now, your most frequent lunch meal would be having uh, mixed rice with mm -hmm. vegetables and uh, your lao soup would be mm -hmm. some, like uh, steamed fish. And then on the some other day, you will have um, fried mihun. Uh, mm. Tapau fried mihun, is it? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, the fried mihun, if I can ask you, what's what's inside it? Mm, actually, it's just those normal economy fried mihun. Yeah, they just put okay. a bit of veggie and like carrots yes. inside. You have fish ball, mm. fish cake and so on? Yes, yeah. Sometimes they will put fish cake and then veggie, yeah, but not a lot. Lah. Mm. How about any meat inside? Meat rarely because outside, right? They they sell it like you know two to three ringgit. Then yeah, it's just very little. All right, right. Yeah, understood. Yeah, understood it. Okay. Uh, so that is for your lunch, and then what will be mm -hmm. your next meal? Next meal, uh, will be straight to dinner, lah. Mm. Dinner. What time you have your mm. dinner? Dinner. Um, dinner. I'll have it around seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. Mm. So you have it uh, outside or you have it at home? Mm, I will pack as well, yeah. You Order pack. delivery or I go out and pack, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so what, what you actually have for your dinner? Mm, dinner, I'll usually have a noodle soup, mihun, yeah, around like mihun, mihun soup. Mihun, yeah? mihun soup, yeah? Mm. Mm. Okay, may I know what, what's inside the mihun soup? Mm, mihun soup usually we have pork slices. Okay, is it in, in one large bowl? The the quantity? Uh, uh the yeah, usually the, yeah. With the with the gravy. Yeah, mm, yeah one large bowl. Mm. One large bowl, okay. Uh all right. So you have mihun soup, uh mihun inside it, and then what else? Pork slices. Uh, pork slices. Mm. Pork slices, okay. If uh, you can imagine one mesh box skin, is it going to be mm -hmm. one mesh box or less? Mm, yeah, around one only, not that much outside. One mesh box, right? Mm. What else? Um, they have fish ball as well. Fish ball. How many fish balls? Mm, three small fish ball, yeah. Three small fish ball, okay. Uh, any vegetables inside? Uh, yeah, they serve with tau okay? Okay, how much is tauge? Tauge, um, around two tablespoon. Two tablespoon, just a regular tablespoon, is it? Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, two tablespoon. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What else? Mm, yeah, that's all. With for the mihun soup with the the lao. Yeah, not a lot. Mm. That's all. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Um. So there's no other vegetables, is it? Do you do you no. add anything mm. on your bihun soup? Yeah, because usually bihun soup outside, you know, there's there's no taste. It's very very plain, you know, very tawa. So I'll usually add my own soy sauce at, at the side. Yeah. So so this one mm. is uh kicap masin, is it? Any any yeah. that you have? Uh sorry. This is uh this uh soy sauce you added at uh -huh. home, is it? Uh, no, they actually give at, at the they give um usually because when we pack right they will give as a side as well the you know the kicap with the chili together yeah oh, right okay mm. understood okay so how many um teaspoon tablespoon you have it mm, around one tablespoon one tablespoon mm. okay so that is your typical meal around uh, mm. seven to eight p.m. in a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you usually have a uh, bihun soup with pork mm -hmm. slice, fish ball, taugi, and also you also added uh, about one tablespoon of soy sauce. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, how 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 frequent you actually have this kind of meal? In mm, a week? How frequent in a week? Um, noodle soup usually around three times a week as well. Mm. Okay. If you mm. don't have it, what else? What would be the, your alternative meal? My alternative similar like lunch, yeah, like take away um, mixed rice. Okay, take away mixed mm. rice. Okay. Mm. So in terms of the portion size uh, and also a selection of the lao pao, is it going to be the same? 
Yeah, because <clears throat> living outside, uh, <clears throat> sorry, because the takeaway and then mixed rice outside, usually they are kind of the same dishes. Yeah, because I rarely cook um, due to, you know, I a uh, busy schedule and stuff. So takeaway easy. So yeah, it's almost the same <laughs> usually. The same. All right. Okay. Mm. okay uh, let's talk a bit uh, about your appetite that you were saying just now. You were saying uh, that... Um, you know, um, your taste just now, um, bitter taste and having that will actually affecting your appetite um, mm -hmm. pretty much. So do you think that, you know, your appetite has been uh, affecting your overall food intake as compared to previously before you had it? Mm, yeah, <clears throat> because previously, uh, actually I eat more than this and then, yeah. I eat more than this, I'll kind of like um probably uh in between I have some snacks, one snack. Mm, okay. Yeah, but yeah, so so now no appetite. So after eating one meal, then it will yeah, it don't feel hungry anymore. Mm. Okay. So right now mm. you only have three main meal and then there is yeah. no snack in between. Mm, no. How about uh supper before you sleep? Supper previously, yes, I used to have supper, yeah, because uh, actually, yeah, the, the doctor actually did tell me before because I need to inject the, 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 the last one before I sleep, right, so it's better to have something, but then, yeah, after dinner, it's really very full because seven to eight, right, so um, I, I wouldn't take anything, so I'll just, yeah, I'll just inject the insulin and go to sleep. Okay, mm. that's good, all right, so you don't take anything uh, for your supper, right, okay. Mm. Um... Okay. Um. Right. Uh. Do you um how how frequent are you actually eating or taking food from fast food chain? Fast, fast food, food chain. chain. Um. Fast food chain. Uh, also, it really depends. Probably. Uh. One that one very less. Uh, one week once. Yeah. Fast food chain because it's quite far from my place. Usually, my place is those like uh. Kedai, makan, mixed rice, those noodle soup shop. Mm. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I, uh, I have uh, some ideas about what you actually have. Yeah. Um, for your... Uh, yeah, and actually dinner, I will have a drink also because you have to... Oh, uh, uh, some drinks. sweet drinks as well, yeah. What kind of drink mm -hmm. you have? Uh, usually, I have tea ice for dinner, yeah. Tea ice. This is tea ice mm. with uh, condensed milk, is it? Yep, yep. The okay, ice is condensed milk, okay. Mm. All right. Okay, I think uh, I got pretty much, I, I guess uh, all of you got pretty much information about what patient is actually eating at home, yeah. Uh, so now what we're going to do, uh, how... Um, Josephine, how to actually uh, create the um, uh, uh, breakout room? Yes, um, so I already made like five rooms and okay. already assigned participants. So there will be around 18 people okay. on each sure. room. Sure. So, so now within your group, within your group, uh, discuss about this case. And also while you're discussing about the management of this case, right? Uh, I would also like you to answer some of the questions I'm sharing with you. Okay. I want you to answer some of these questions while you're managing this case here. Yeah? Uh, first, you identify what are the information pertaining to nutrition assessment that, that are missing. Yeah, if you have a chance to see this patient, you will ask this question. Right, and then secondly, uh, you also identify what will be the readily available disease specific nutritional uh, sc uh, screening tool or composite uh, nutrition that you can actually use to assess the risk of this patient. Okay, and then uh, based on the diet of Miss C, Miss Chan, that you have uh, you have uh, take down, uh, jot down, you uh, try to compare with her requirement. Yeah. Try to use the appropriate um, calculation to calculate Miss Chan uh, requirement, and then you try to compare whatever her intake is with the her requirement. How does it compare to? All right, 
And then uh, maybe you can also uh, just to refresh about the I ISRNM um, protein energy wasting criteria, because we know that in CKD patient as they progress toward the end stage of kidney disease, and then uh, and furthermore, if they are undergoing dialysis, they are very much prone to protein energy wasting. Yeah, we can see the prevalence uh, uh, like I presented last time in Southeast Asia can be up to 60%. So it's also important to assess this at much earlier, you know, especially as they progress to uh, end-stage kidney disease. So based on this criteria, do you think this patient is actually fit as one of the candidate for protein energy wasting, right? And then uh, based on overall data assessment that you have done, uh, then you try to formulate what would be the nutrition diagnosis yeah, for this patient what would be the, the best nutrition diagnosis uh, for this patient, okay? So to do this, you need some help from the practitioners, especially yeah, for the intern. Uh, you can discuss with them and so on. And then you probably discuss and justify the priority of dietary intervention for this case. Okay, and finally, uh, this one you can do it later. Try to do document the SCP case provided, okay? Maybe I can give you about uh, 10 minutes for you to do the discussion, all right? And then uh, after that, we call back to the main room and then I can hear from each of the group what will be your NB for the case and how you actually deal with, with this case, all right? And then if we got time, then we can call the patient quickly and then you can deliver some the pertinent information that you want to give to the patient, all right? Is that okay? Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. We can proceed now with discussion. Okay. So I will open the breakout room. There will be five. Okay, Dr. Sylvie three. The breakout room is already closed, and we are currently waiting for participants to come back to the main room. But most of the participants already um, joined okay. us again. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I hope. Uh, I know that that is very uh, uh, brief. Uh, but let's try our best what we can do within these um, next few minutes, right? Okay, maybe I can uh, call upon maybe uh, group one first. Group one, um, I would prefer for intern to present instead of practitioner, right? Because we want to help intern, right? So identify the information needed to complete nutrition uh, assessment for this patient. What would be your answer? Group one, can I have a volunteer? Or, should, or, or I just give a liberty to Miss Josephine to call anyone in group one. <laughs> okay. Um, so on group one, we have some interns, uh, Melin, Adiba, or maybe Ilham from Paul Kesmar. Yeah, Ilham. Okay, yeah, Ilham sure. is like it's like my student name here. All right, Ilham. Ilham, can you unmute yourself and uh just try? Don't worry. You can speak Bahasa too. If you, if if language is a barrier for you, I can understand Bahasa Indonesia, but I cannot I cannot reply in Bahasa of course. Yes, go ahead, oh, Ilham. Yes. Ilham, go ahead. Do you have any issues with your... Who, who want to... Otherwise, uh, just open it to anyone. In a group one. Yeah, Adiba, only Adib Adiba. Yeah, Adiba. Yes, everyone is, is very quiet, yeah. Or Melin right. from Brawijaya. Thank you. 
get um others from group one oh, or if you don't understand do you understand the question or or you want me to further explain about it so um what uh, the video that you watched just now is part of nutrition assessment there are some information that missing from the data that i presented as well as from the video that you just watched so what will be the additional information that you that will be important for you to understand about this patient okay No one from group one wants to share. No, they are no, one. <laughs> no one wants to from group one wants to share. Okay, from any group, from any group. Is there anyone? Or perhaps I can just call up uh, some name. But I don't know which one is uh, practitioners and which one is actually, uh, you know, intern. Most intern has their names with M O O C in the beginning of their name. Oh, okay, okay, okay. M O O C, all the intern. Okay, maybe I can call Anisia. I this Anisia. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Anisia Dwi Kurnia. Yeah. Can you answer? Okay, let me give the answer then <laughs> because we don't have much time, yeah? All right, okay. That's all right. It's totally all right. It's, it's okay to make mistakes, yeah? Uh, there's nothing wrong, actually, yeah, uh, uh, in giving answer because all of us can actually learn something out of here, okay? Maybe for question one, I try to answer. Okay, the next question, I will expect the intern yeah, to try to answer some of the questions, okay? So the question one, if you guys uh, kind of agree with me, some of the important aspect that I probably missed out in during that interview that was not included in the interview was that I uh, didn't further uh, probe on in terms of the, um, you know, nutrition focus, physical examination. Usually we do this during face-to-face -face when we see the patient, right? Uh, we can see the, uh, we can actually check on the presence of edema, the, the uh, pedal edema just now, whether it's still present there. So that may indicate some fruit overload or uh, excessive sodium intake could actually relate to it. Uh, and more importantly, because this is type 1 diabetic patient, you also need to check on the sign of symptom hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. Yeah, I have to further uh, probe on the frequency when the patient experiences hypoglycemia, how frequent she's experiencing this in a week, for example. Yeah. Um, uh, and then what will be the knowledge of the patient when, when actually dealing with hypoglycemia? I bet patients have a lot of knowledge yeah, because a uh, patient has experienced these things at a very uh, young age at 16 years old. All right. And then uh, how the patient do that in, in, in practice. Yeah. And also, I didn't ask about physical activity level, yeah, uh, how active the patient is, because this, again, will actually um, dictate how much calories we're going to give to the patient later on, right? And then, um, I probably have to check more on the use of the herbal uh, supplement, yeah? Uh, patient did mention that she is taking Lengi, Lengi, yeah, that is part of the herbal supplements. And I would like to ask, I have to ask more, whether patients do understand the relationship between taking these supplements and the content of this, this supplement and the kidney failure. Yeah, this is quite a huge problem in Malaysia, especially uh, because many people uh, tend to believe that certain herbal supplements can help them with certain kind of uh, condition, but end up having kidney failure because of the you know um, content of it. You know, uh, because it's not being tightly regulated by the Minister of Health. And then uh, in terms of the biochemistry, I could also check on the, uh, because you can see that the missing data would be the lipid profile. Patient is being prescribed statin, but yet there is no uh, lipid profile of it. So you, you have to cross check on that as well. Yeah. And again, the uh, self-monitoring of blood glucose that is 
uh, tied in with the hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia uh, just now, whether patient do monitor the blood glucose at home. Yeah. And more importantly, the stage of change at what level the patient is currently is. Is she uh, receptive? Is she is, uh, you know, um, uh, um, able to do some changes, you know, uh, is motivated to do some changes. So you have to assess on that as as well. Yeah. Is there any question from members of the four, from the intern especially? No? No question? All right. Okay. Okay. Perhaps we, we should ask the intern to turn off, turn, to turn on their camera, the intern especially. Otherwise, we can't really see, I mean, we can't really see people, how your expression is and so on. Please, can you do that? Can you turn on your camera if bandwidth is not an issue for you? Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Please, every intern, please turn on your camera. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next question, shall we? Okay. So the next question is, what are the readily available disease-specific nutritional uh, screening or composite nutritional screening tool that we can use to assess the risk of this patient? This is quite straightforward, easy question. All right. Uh, maybe I can ask... Um, uh, okay, maybe I can ask... Uh, Farah Aulia. Farah Aulia, are you there? Farah Aulia is from, from UGM, is it? Farah, are you, are you there? So uh, you are? You... Yes, I'm here. Yes, good. Okay, good. Finally, I can hear someone talking, <laughs> not just me. All right. Okay. So, what what is your answer on this? Quite straightforward answer. Uh, for CKD patient, maybe we can use malnutrition inflammation score from the screening tool. All right. So we can use MIS. Okay, but MIS is uh, very recommended for CKD five D, which is undergoing the dialysis. All right. So, but uh, for CKD, we can use 7-point SGA, all right? Okay. As part of the, very good, very well done, okay. Okay, what would be the Mrs. Miss C, Miss Chan dietary intake in relation to her, um, you know, uh, dietary requirement? Do you guys manage to uh, calculate on the calories, protein, you manage to, to calculate it. Do you, do you find any issues there? Maybe I can have someone from uh, any group. Or I just call a name. <laughs> Azra Izati from ITB. Azra? Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, so, so you managed to calculate or you don't have time just now? Mm, I'm sorry, not yet. I'm not yet, okay. Time. You didn't manage to calculate, okay? Yeah. Is that the same for Mossary Group? Uh, it was too quick, isn't it? All right, that's okay. Uh, so let, let us calculate the dietary requirement first. So this is some of the specific um, uh, formula that you can use for CKD patient, yeah? Uh, so in, you also have you can also use a quick method anyway if you prefer. But this one uh, is being recommended by uh, NKF two thousand twenty twenty one. So you can uh, you need to use a scientific calculator anyway because it's the power of two point zero two three. So you can calculate this. So the energy requirement based for this patient, I think, is around around uh, resting energy expenditure is about around one thousand three hundred. 84, and then if you time with the uh, activity level, will be about 1,600. Yeah, so that's uh, energy requirement. So uh, based on, uh, we're going to look at her diet record a bit later. So 
So question number four, based on ISRNM, protein energy wasting and clinical diagnostic criteria, do you, is this patient is one of the PEW candidate? Do you, do you find this patient is one of PEW candidate? Uh, how about if I can call intern Latifa from UGM? Yes. Yes. Do you find? Uh, do you think that this patient is one of the uh, uh fall under the PEW criteria? So based on ISN, uh, ISRNM uh, PEW criteria, they divide into uh three. They have to meet three of these criteria out of four, isn't it? Uh, body mass, room chemistry, muscle mass, and also dietary intake. Do you think this patient is one of it? I think no. No, why not? Uh, because only meet two criteria. Only meet two criteria? Uh, yes. Albumin what was the criteria? Albumin level is below 3.8 mm -hmm. and the BMI is 22. Mm, okay. Okay, very good. Well done. Okay. So muscle mass, however, I didn't have the liberty. Yeah, if I see the patient and then you can do the skin for caliper and you can uh, check the muscle mass of the patient, right? So uh, we don't really have that on dietary intake. Uh, we don't really see, yeah, um, the patient actually have a uh, pretty low intake. Okay, so that doesn't really justify or doesn't really put the patient into the risk of having protein energy wasting. All right, let's take a look into her intake. Will you be able to calculate? Most of you won't, is it? Doesn't have enough time. Okay, uh, based on the calculation, yeah, a rough calculation only about 1,000 uh, kcal. Um, and then uh, in terms of protein intake is 58%, uh, 23% uh, from the overall intake. Yeah. Uh, fat about 23 percent so that was a rough calculation uh i also just put put it uh right now while you guys are, are working on it all right i didn't calculate much earlier okay uh so this is okay so what i, I need to highlight here is that if you can see the protein intake of this patient is it excessive or just okay for this patient how do you find it Protein intake for Miss uh, C. Is it okay? How do you know whether the patient is taking adequate? How, you need to compare with the requirement, isn't it? Right? So, what will be the requirement for this patient? Anyone, any intern would like to answer? Or perhaps we should open to practitioners. Who probably have more uh uh is 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 more brave to answer that's uh, that's okay we can learn and we can share to each other anyone want to answer someone answer on the chat box Oh, you're yeah, answering the answer. chat box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from okay. Inas. Okay. Right. Visa. So the answer for okay, good Inas. Yeah. So Inas answer 0. 0.6 gram per kilogram uh body weight. Okay. Why why Inas are uh, answering 0. 0.6 gram per kilogram body weight? Why she need that much of protein? Okay. Let me calculate. So, uh, if uh, based on her intake, roughly, if you got 58.6, then you can divide by her current uh, body weight. Yeah? Her current body weight is about 57.1. So, her intake is 1.0, 1.0 gram per kilogram uh, body weight. So, one of you were recommending that this patient should actually take 0.6 gram per kilogram body weight instead of currently taking 1 gram per kilogram body weight, yeah? So you can see her protein is slightly um, excessive, slightly excessive, yeah? Um, given the fact that 
uh, 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 studies have shown that uh, providing low protein uh, diet for CKD patient, especially uh, diabetic or kidney disease, uh, may provide or confer some benefit. However, we must understand, yeah, we must understand this uh, very important principle. Uh, to control progression for this patient towards end-stage kidney disease, we want, meaning that we want to delay the progression towards end-stage kidney disease and the need for dialysis, it's not just about protein intake. Yeah, it's not just about protein intake. Uh, what more important as a diabetic patient is in terms of glycemic control. The patient should have a very well controlled diabetes first, right? And the second thing, you can also see the patient when she admitted uh, in July, uh, she also exhibit uh, elevated blood pressure. That is also important to be controlled, you know, elevated blood pressure. Yeah. So that's why that's why it comes back to the assessment question just now. Uh, that wasn't really complete in which we have to look into the uh, glycemic control pattern, how high the blood sugars are uh, going up after meal, before meal, and so on. So those are aspects that we have to look for first. Right? You have to refer to the MNT for diabetes in this case. Yeah. So uh, having said that, there is some uh, leeway in which you can actually provide slightly higher protein in the case of CKD diabetes diabetes yeah as composed as opposed to ckd without diabetes so for ckd with diabetes you can give 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 up to 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight yeah so in this case as a patient is currently taking one gram per kilogram body weight so you might want to reduce up to 0 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight first yeah and then you can why why we can give much higher protein because we want to adjust on the carbohydrate. Yeah. If you give a very low protein, all right. Um, so it's very difficult to adjust in terms of the portion of carbohydrate. Yeah, the amount of carbohydrate can be taken for this patient. Right? You got you got the idea here? Yeah, any question? No question? All right, okay. If you if you have question, if you are afraid to ask uh face to face, you can actually put uh your question on the chat chat box, right? All right, so that's uh pretty much it. Um, so the conclusion is that um, when look you look into the macronutrients providing uh macronutrient for CKD uh patient DKD patient yeah diabetic kidney disease patient. It's not just the or composition of the micronutrient is important, but you have to look some other clinical aspect as well, as I already mentioned just now. All right. Okay. So I just want to highlight a few things here. You can see here, um, you know, a study have also shown that spontaneous diet, uh, dietary protein intake actually will be reduced as the patient progress toward end stage kidney disease yeah skd but in this uh, in this uh, stage uh, in this case uh, is still relatively taken quite a high protein because uh, given the fact that patient is uh, used to take that much of protein right so uh, those you can actually uh, inform yeah you can actually discuss with the patient about this okay all right um and uh, last week, someone asking about, you know, how about the keto analogs, uh, the use of um, uh, very low protein diet, yeah? Uh, if the practitioners are available here, maybe you can share the practice in Indonesia. I would also like to learn more. Um, in Malaysia though, um, the use of uh, uh, keto analogs, um, the, the one that, of quite a uh, common keto type of keto analog being used is keto sterile. Uh, but the use of keto analog is come with a cost. Yeah, the government doesn't really subsidize everything, so it's kind of expensive. This, this one box, one box of keto analogs costs about 250 ringgit. 250 ringgit. So if you were to follow the uh, the um the recommended dose, 
by the uh, manufacturer. So the patient have to actually take the about four box of this, you know, about one thousand ringgit, which is equivalent to I think about uh, three point four million rupiah. So that's a lot for a month uh, of supply. Yeah. So um, so the dosage that you you need to actually calculate uh keto analog uh usage uh that uh, you can uh, based on the recommended uh, dose by the manufacturer is at 0 0.0125 to five gram per kilogram body weight or uh about so uh, about uh one tablet per five kilogram body weight yeah one tablet per five kilogram body weight yeah so in the case that the patient is um you know uh 60 kilogram so that would need about how much how many how much about 12 tablets in a day right so um but uh there are recent research uh being published you know they only use half of the dosage actually they are using about one tablet per 10 kilogram uh, body weight of the patient, all right? But they are not providing at 0.3 gram per kilogram body weight protein from diet, but they're providing about 0.6 gram uh, per kilogram idea, uh, idea body weight. And that also confers some benefit to the patient. Uh, so it's just a matter of the budget here yeah, in, the, in the use of uh, keto analogs, all right? Okay, I think I pretty much covered uh, everything. Did I miss any question? Yes, Andy, nutrition diagnosis. What would be the, the priority in this case? What would be the priority in this case? Who would like to try? Who is brave enough to try? Okay. Uh, Anyone? I think I have already uh, included some of it. Yeah. So the priority of this case, for my personal opinion, uh, first I will actually uh, I would uh, I think there will be at least two uh, nutrition diagnosis or aspect a problem nutrition problem that I can I can actually uh, uh, tackle in this case. The first one is in terms of the glycemic control. So I want to adjust on that first. I want to make sure the patient understand uh, about the insulin injection. Yeah, you can actually um, uh, see from our conversation just now. Patient don't really uh, sometimes uh, forgot eating supper and so on. Yeah, so I want to make sure there will be a uh, good glycemic control first. Yeah, by doing self monitoring blood glucose and so on. Um, and then the second one would be I will adjust a little bit about the protein intake. Yeah, to cut off some bit of protein intake from the diet. Yeah, uh, from one gram per kilogram up to 0 0.8 gram per kilogram. That's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we that's pretty much it. Uh, do you have any question? I'm afraid yes. that. Yeah, there's really? one question um, on chat box um, mm -hmm. from Vitriani Krishna one. This is regarding keto analog for very low protein diet. Uh, example of if a patient needs is 40 gram of protein and patient got from the food uh, as many as 30 gram. So is the keto analog um, provide around 10 gram uh, or how many tablets should the patient receive from the keto analog? Okay, how many tablet patient receive from keto analog? What, what is the weight of the patient anyway? Do you know? Uh, uh, the estimate needs, for example, here, as you said, is 40 gram of protein. 40 gram of protein, okay. Uh, let me calculate uh, backward. <laughs> so 40 gram protein. Okay, uh, what you need to do is just that uh, uh, is again, uh, is depend whether you want to go for full dose as recommended by manufacturer. 
right? Or you can actually go to the half dose just now as uh, some pub, uh, pub paper that published in Taiwan, I think they're using only half dose. Uh, so if you uh, is going to uh, use the full dose here, first you actually calculate the requirement of uh, keto analog per se. Yeah? Uh, so uh, let's say uh, the body weight of the patient yeah, is uh, 60 kilo and then you time it You divide it by five because one tablet is for five kilogram body weight. Okay, so that will be a twelve tablet in a day, right? That twelve tablet in a day. So on top of that, uh, the twelve tablet in a day. So the twelve tablet in a day, then you can give a uh, protein 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then you time it with the weight sixty kilogram. So protein from this patient is only eighteen, but uh, that's mean that uh, taking 40 gram protein is actually more than 0.3 already, right? More than 0.3 already. So, uh, so uh, I guess the patient is taking protein around 0.65 or something like that, okay? So if you want to go for 0.65, then you, um, and the budget is a constant there, you can go half strength. Yeah, uh, which is uh, six tablet in a day, okay? But uh, the manufacturer doesn't really recommend go for uh, that half string, yeah? <laughs> I just uh, disclaimer, all right? Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tripiti, for the answer and confirmation. There is one more uh, question uh, about the protein requirements. Uh, do we need to consider the increase of creatinine and BUN level of the patient? Okay, good. good. Very good question. About protein requirement, do we need to consider the increase of creatinine and BUN level? Uh, you expect that as the patient progress toward end stage kidney disease, of course, there will be increase in BUN and uh, creatinine level. And then, uh, more importantly, on top of uh, looking on the biochemical parameters alone, you also need to look into the sign and symptom exhibited by the patient. Yeah. So one of the peculiar or uh, most important one is uh, the one that I mentioned just, um, the patient mentioned just now is having uh, bitter taste and that is a sign of, you know, uh, accumulating of ure uremic toxin, right? Having bitter taste and then having low appetite. Um, so those are aspects that, you know, uh, that can actually gauge you how much protein within that range that you're going to give, right? You probably have to opt for much uh, a bit lower range in order to minimize the production of urea. You know, you don't want to, to produce more urea when the patient is already at uremic. But of course, uh, there must be some discussion with your fellow nephrologist or, uh, about it when the patient is actually planned, when they actually plan to put the patient on dialysis. Yeah, usually when patients start to exhibit all those uh, signs and symptoms of uremia, the doctors will plan to actually start the dialysis pretty soon. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, um, it's going to impact the patient uh, very much. Okay. Is that, is that answering question? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's next question um, for type 1 diabetes. How important is it to count or distribute the calorie amount for each meal time uh, regarding the insulin dose? Hmm. I know uh, what you're uh, talking. It's not really distribute the calorie, but distribute the carbohydrate for meal time. Yes, that's that's important. The distribution of the carbohydrate, a total amount of carbohydrate, distribution of carbohydrate, type of carbohydrate. That is important. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's one more. If the patient uh, with CKD um, doesn't need hemodialysis, um, the intake for high protein, so how many protein are recommended? If I would like to ask, all right. 
Okay, I can understand it. Uh, so this is CKD patient, but doesn't go for hemodialysis as yet, isn't it? And then uh, and at the same time, patient is having infection and trauma. All right. Uh, so uh, my question is, is this patient uh, having ATI on the same time or is it just uh, having trauma okay, or infection? So yes, uh, you can consider a uh, slightly uh, higher protein. There, there is no black and white on this actually. <laughs> It's, it's very difficult to give. Okay, so you can consider 1.0. No, no, it's, it's not that way, okay? So, you know, I'm not sure what CKD is it. Is it CKD4, CKD5 already? Yeah. Uh, for example, if, if patient is already at CKD5 and at he beating all those signs and symptoms of uremia, you know, uh, and then you have to wait. Okay, having infection on the same time and then having a uh, uremia, you you can't really. If the patient is having all those signs and symptoms, having uremia, patient can't really eat. You can't really. I mean, you can't really force to have a higher protein anyway because patient can't really eat on that time, on that uh, condition. So, uh, however, if in this case. Uh, you are referring to CKD3 and patient is okay, doesn't have, uh, doesn't have any uh, sign and symptom of uremia, very unlikely at CKD3. So you can consider a slightly higher protein requirement beyond the recommendation. Okay. All right. Is that clear? Yes, it's very clear. Thank you, Dr. Suzuki. Is there any more questions for, from participants? If not, I think that is all the questions. Dr. Suzuki, we also already are running out of time. Uh, thank you once again for the material presentation and also discussion and a very clear um, implementation through our case study discussion also. For participants, thank you for your questions um, and discussion today. Some review points that I can uh, re restate is, first, we have to see for diabetic kidney disease for patients in our case study, um, the first thing that we have to uh, assess or evaluate is how the control of blood glucose first and we can uh, still provide slightly higher protein for these patients and then also uh, always prioritize addressing sign and symptom first uh, versus um, seeing the lab results uh, of the patients itself okay uh, i think that is all thank you once again for the presentation i can give back the time to the mc Omi, please thank you and good morning good morning thank you madati so thank you once again dr zulfitri azuan madaud rdn for the wonderful presentations and also we thank uh, Ms. Yosopin Anandati for moderating the sessions. Uh, Bapak Ibu, rekan-rekan sekalian, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have finally come to the end of our program. On behalf of the Department of Nutrition and Health, Faculty of Medicine, Public Health and Nursing, Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, once again we thank Dr. Zulfitri Mataut RDN and also we thank all the participants for joining us today. God bless and God good day for each and every one of you. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.